Good to see you guys again. Let's begin. We're gonna pray. The word follows us for my name, the over the father, the spirit of mighty name, the over the father, the spirit of mighty name, the rougher, the rougher, the rougher, the father, the spirit of mighty name, washing the see the king of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's just get ready. Hold on. Vinyl curtain. Were you guys ready? You like that right there? You like my snacks? It's in the kitchen. Uh, Theo, good to see you. Good to see everybody. You know the rules, right? Come on, help me. Pray the Spirit fill us. Pray the Spirit fill me. If you love me as your brother or servant, pray the Spirit will own me, possess me, seal me, control me, constrain me. And I pray the Spirit does that for all of us, for our loved ones. You know, I always pray for my daughters, my angels. Pray the Spirit will give us perfect self-control. Self-restraint, yeah, rumble's working. Self-constraint, control our passions. We're not controlled by them. Pray the Holy Spirit will crucify our flesh, destroy the fruits of our flesh. Pray that for one another. And immediately when we pray, I beg the Holy Spirit to always include my daughters, my angels, include all our loved ones, right? Pray the Holy Spirit will destroy the lust of our eyes, the lust of our flesh, our pride, our arrogance, our ego. Pray the Holy Spirit will destroy fake humility, which is just as disgusting as pride, fake humbleness, fake spirituality, fake love. Pray the Holy Spirit will destroy every form of idolatry, blasphemy from us, my precious daughters, our loved ones, Control our tongues and mouths, that in his infinite power, he will purge our tongues and mouths, purify, cleanse, and wash our tongues and mouths. In the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, our Lord, our love, our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, in his purifying fire, to never betray, to never deny, to never denounce, never disown, blaspheme our God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Pray the Holy Spirit will destroy the beams in our eyes. Destroy hypocrisy from us. Destroy all our fears, doubts, unbelief. Destroy double-mindedness. Destroy <clears throat> living a double life. The Spirit will control us. Never allow us to fall into scandal. Shame the Lord. To acknowledge our sins. To acknowledge our weaknesses. To confess them, not hide them. And seek His power for strict discipline. Pray the Holy Spirit will destroy jealousy, envy, maliciousness in us, gossip, slander, backbiting. Pray the Holy Spirit will destroy lies, deceit, trickery. Pray the Holy Spirit will empower us to practice what we preach, to be doers of the word, to give us the greatest gifts. We need to have perfect faith in our God, hope in our God, love for our God, who is Father, Son, and Spirit. May the Spirit energize us with those gifts. Pray the Holy Spirit will fill us with his fruit, his virtues, his righteous deeds. Pray the Holy Spirit will flood us in his glorious, beautiful presence, flood my daughters, our loved ones. Pray the Holy Spirit will use us as his mouthpieces, his hands and feet, to see through the eyes of the Father, the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, through the eyes of the Holy Spirit, to hate what the Holy Spirit hates, love what the Holy Spirit loves. And pray the Spirit will save us from being politically correct, to never prostitute ourselves for numbers, for status, for fame, for position, for money, destroy fear of not having enough, that the Holy Spirit will give us strict discipline, to pray intensely, fast intensely, study the Bible, do a lot of that, meditate, recite, obey, live out the Bible, the scriptures, to get to church, pray the Lord have mercy on me and failing in that area, to get to assembly, to get to the Eucharist, and I also need to be taught how to make confession. Please, Holy Spirit, teach us and own us. Pray the Holy Spirit will fill us with patience, boldness, fearlessness, Holiness, righteousness, purity, and have mercy on us and our weakness. Have mercy on me and be patient with me in struggling with these lusts, impurities, and food addiction. To overcome, to crucify our flesh, to overcome the world, 
through faith in Jesus and crush Satan on our feet by the blood of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen my throat with perfect vigor and health. The Holy Spirit, give me strict discipline to manage, overcome food addiction and laziness, to get healthier and use that health out of pure motives to serve you, the church, glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. See my daughters grow up and that I'm a blessing to this young woman. Her protect her, purify her, cleanse her, that I won't cause her to stumble, but be Jesus to her. I pray the Holy Spirit will strengthen my heart, my arteries, my lungs. And give me perfect recall of every jot, total portion of scripture, perfect exegesis. Destroy error in us and give us power. Give me power to practice what we preach. Please, Holy Spirit, have mercy on me. That we die glorifying Jesus Christ or glorify Jesus until he returns. And I ask the Holy Spirit for perfect attentiveness, wisdom, knowledge, illumination. Destroy distractions and say, muzzle these dogs, crush their filthy mouths, rebuke, chasten them to fear the Lord Jesus until they repent. And surround us with a wall of fire from his glorious presence. We ask the Holy Spirit to reinvigorate us, revive us, replenish us, regenerate us, <clears throat> rejuvenate us. And I ask the Holy Spirit, please, Holy Spirit, own all our possessions, own us fully, own our money, yours. Please save us from the locusts. Own the YouTube channel. They will not delete it. Please, Holy Spirit, remove the two strikes. And own the Rumble channel and own the blogs and the articles. All yours. It's yours. It, be, it belongs to you. And we give ourselves to you, to the Son, to the Father. We beseech you, hear our prayers, purify our motives, and bless this session. Bless the internet connection and audiovisual qualities. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to the Father, Holy Spirit. Okay, so you guys ready? We're going to pray. I just need some water. So I told you I'd be back. So what I'm going to do is I'm, well, I was going to do Mark 12, but I'll do John 17 for a listen. For a reason about what happened there. All right, for a reason. You'll see. And don't forget, make Rumble great again. Maraga. Maraga. It's less censorship, better than YouTube. So you guys on Rumble, <clears throat> I acknowledge you. Maraga. Make Rumble great again. Maraga. <clears throat> Strengthen my throat. Make he make my voice pleasing to your ears. <clears throat> All right. Now, with that said. Let's do what we always do to follow the example of the early church. I would fast Wednesdays and Fridays and pray the Lord's Prayer three times a day. There we go with distractions. Right? Hmm. All right. Here we go again. All right. So, Maga, make Rumble great again. Is it fully charged? Let me see. Not yet. Okay, so <clears throat> you know the series. In the series, you're going to learn how to interpret Scripture, how not to interpret Scripture. You're going to learn the depth of Scripture. You're going to learn the core doctrines of your faith and practices that we must observe and the biblical basis thereof. And you're going to learn how to destroy lies and blasphemies and false religions, especially Islam. If the Holy Spirit is pleased to work through me and use me as his mouthpiece. So but let's follow the example of the early church. The Diddy K says, Christians fast Wednesdays, Fridays. Say the Lord's Prayer three times a day. So let's say it together. With the Apostles' Creed. Name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord. It was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. Sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. The forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I mean, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but lead us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever, unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Holy Spirit, bless the internet connections, destroy distractions, and destroy agitation, and flood us in your joy, your love, and peace. In Jesus' name. Okay, guys, rumble went down. Hold on, guys. What is the rumble go down? Let me see. It says that rumble went down here, right? Let me see. No, it didn't go down, did it? Yeah, it says rumble went down. Rumble's okay? All right. I don't get it, man. Yeah, see, it's saying here it's not working. So hold on. Rumble's still working, right? Hold on. I guess not. Let's see. Okay, because it's showing me on StreamYard it's not working. See? Hold on. Okay, now it's working. Thank you, Lord. Lord, to the Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for hearing us. Okay, so we're going to do John 17. I was going to do, Jerby, where you been, man? Man, you, man, where you been? I was going to do Mark 12, but I want to start with John 17 because this, because I want to teach you a lesson. The purpose of the Bible. So you guys ready? Let's begin. Now class has begun. You know the rules, right? Da -da. La, 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 la. Let's go to the Bible. John 17. Okay. Let me. Okay. Let me. Again, remind you. We get so caught up. We get so caught up in trying to refute heretics, blasphemers, and we get so caught up on focusing on how to explain a passage that we forget to read context, like John 17, 3. We get so caught up in trying to refute the distortion of this passage that we forget the theme of the chapter, the purpose of the chapter, as it unveils the infinite love and heart of our God, because we get so caught up in trying to refute here. And this is eternal life, <clears throat> that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom we have sent. Pray the Holy Spirit will give me the help I need, holiness, to practice what I preach, and the Lord Jesus will have mercy on me and not hand me over. I will do a session on just going Verse by verse on John 17, if the Lord wills with his permission, sooner than later. Because this will give you a view of the infinite love, compassion, mercy, and heart of our God. But we get so focused on polemics, we get so focused on refuting heretics, that we overlook the fact that verse 3 is part of a context where the Father is praying. I'm sorry. The Son, Holy Spirit, destroy air in me, rebuke Satan, help us to focus. For your glory, Father, for your glory, Lord Jesus, for your glory, Holy Spirit. The Son is praying to the Father. And as he's praying, as he's praying, he then reveals the infinite heart and love of our God. He who is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Now, respect the rules. You're not going to chime in. You're not going to ask the relevant questions. You're not going to talk down to us. You're not going to mock. Because I'm going to cuss you out and insult you and humiliate you if you do. Because you don't respect the rules, we don't respect you. That's why you got to get rid of Lee, because Lee's another arrogant bastard, a narcissist dog, scum. Because Lee wants uh, attention, Lee Riley. So get him the out of here. Go to your vomit, you arrogant piece of trash, because you need attention. Because you have no respect for people's channels, so we don't respect you. Now get the out of here. All right? Lord, constrain us, destroy unrighteous anger, unholy indignation, but make our hatred and anger perfectly just in your sight. Okay, are we ready? Because I want to start insulting people. Because you have no respect. I'll repeat the rules. You want to be disrespected. Okay, you ready? Are we ready to begin? All right. This is a class. Let the spirit work through me. It's not about your agenda, you ego, maniacal, spiritual bastards. Lord, rebuke you to learn the fear of the Lord and be humble because you guys have no respect. It's all about you. 
because that's just how you live your life. It's all about you. May God crucify our flesh, destroy our flesh. Now let's read it not for polemical or apologetic purposes. Let's read it devotionally. Let's read it the way it was meant to be read, to see the heart of God, what God's will is for us, and what the Lord desires for us. Marcus, do you love the whore that birthed you, Marcus? Do you love the whore that gave birth to you, Marcus? The whore that did muta with the Shia and gave birth to a bastard like you? Do you love that whore? And Marcus, are you a whore? Because you sure are a whore. You're of your father the devil. You're scum. You're a bastard. And I'd spit on you, but my spit's better than you, you filthy whore. Anyway, you ready? I'm not going to be politically correct. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. That's why you like it, because you're sick of effeminate, queer bait Christianity. May God constrain me, and I finish the race and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Marcus, go find the whore that birthed you, because the Shia are waiting for her. Okay? Stupid bastard. Arrogant bastards, narcissists. It's all about them. See, right when we begin, Holy Spirit, rebuke the demons, rebuke Satan, and fill us. With Father Spirit. Right when we want to talk about the heart of Jesus, the bastards manifest. Right? Focus. Let's focus. This is meant to be read devotionally, meant to be read not for polemical or apologetic purposes, to see what God's will is for us on earth, what God has destined for us, what Jesus prays for us. Okay? Okay, everyone with me? Let's begin. Focus. Holy Spirit, drown out distractions and fill us with your presence. We need you. We need the Father. We need the Lord Jesus and the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us. Watch. Listen. Learn. The heart of our God. Okay? Mods, don't even give him a chance. Block and get him out of here. Because we want to glorify the Trinity right now. And Lord willing, pray sooner than later. I'll go through the verse by verse and try to get as much meat as the Spirit will allow me. Because illumination is from him. Okay. Watch the heart of our God. Jesus spoke these things and lifting up his eyes to heaven. He said, Father, the hour has come. Because now remember, this is the night of his betrayal. And this is not in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is not in the Garden of Gethsemane. People think this is the prayer he prayed in the Garden. No. The Lord is in the upper room. The Lord is in the room with the disciples. And he's praying this in front of them so they can hear what God has destined for them, hear the love of God for them, right? Hear what the Lord is doing for them and what he wants for them. Okay? Keep that in mind. So let's pray. So this is there. And then they leave. Then they go to the garden and he gets arrested. So this is the night of his betrayal. So he knows the hour has come. The hour has come for him to be lifted up, the Son of Man lifted up on the cross, which is his exaltation because it's through the cross that he will then enter glory. Crucifixion, burial, resurrection, ascension into glory. The cross is the vehicle through which Jesus will be glorified and enter into his glorious presence. Okay? So now. This is why he's saying, the hour is to come for me to be glorified by you. Glorify your son that the son may glorify you. It's time, Father. This is why I came into the world, that through the cross I would be glorified. You would be glorified in union with me and through me. You would glorify me because the world will see the cross was not my defeat. The cross was my triumph because the cross was Jesus' weapon to destroy and crush the kingdom of darkness, redeem us, and bring us into glory. Okay, but keep that in mind. Okay, keep that in mind. Everyone, focus and get rid of the demonic bastards. Brother Barry, does your mother love to do muta with the Shia because you're a bastard? Anyway, now watch. Even as you gave him authority over all flesh, that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. This is Jesus' prayer from his heart, praying to the Father. And look what he prays for and who he prays for. Let's focus on 
the context of this prayer. And may the Spirit move us to see how beautiful our God is. Okay? Watch here. So, the Son has power over all flesh. All flesh, subject to the Son, belongs to the Son. And what does the Son want for the, all flesh? Eternal life. That means here in this prayer, the Lord is saying He owns all flesh. The Father has authorized them to rule over all flesh and to save all flesh. But sadly, not everyone will come to him. So the Father will draw those who are open, receptive to the Spirit, and he'll bring them to Christ. And once you're brought to Christ, he will give you everlasting life, immortality, moral incorruption. Okay, you with me there? Okay, so keep focusing. Focus with me. But now, how do we obtain it? And this is the point of verse 3. How do we obtain it? How do I receive this gift of everlasting life that the Lord wants to give to all flesh and will give to all who trust in him? Because he will preserve us. This is eternal life. This is how I obtain and receive everlasting life. Knowing the Father, the only true God, and knowing Jesus Christ, whom he sent into the world to save us. Meaning, this gift is yours only through intimate, personal relationship, communion, intimate, personal knowledge of the Father and the Son along with the Spirit. See, that's the point of John 17, 3. But we get so heavily involved in polemics, apologetics, we forget what this means in context. There is no life apart from communion, fellowship, love, and intimacy with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Okay, we got the point now before I move on? Now watch. Watch his prayers. How deep it's going to get. So now, I glorified you on earth, having finished the work which you have given me to do. One thing about this prayer, the Lord will talk about the future as already having occurred taken place. Notice the glorification of the Lord ties in with his death on the cross, burial, resurrection, ascension. But he speaks of it as already having taken place. You know why? Because God Almighty cannot be thwarted. God Almighty cannot be thwarted. Okay? He is sovereign over creation. And when he acts, no one can stop him. So in other words, it's guaranteed. Take it to the bank. It's done. It's a done deal. I will be crucified. I will be buried. I will be raised. I'll be glorified. So he can speak of it as a past reality. You want me there? He speaks of it. It's already taking place. I have glorified you. So past then. But now watch. He's going to use a present tense in a minute. So now that I've glorified you, Father, glorify me. You see how it works? It's reciprocal. I've glorified you by finishing the work you sent me to do, the salvation of those who will come to us. So now, Father, it's your turn to glorify me and glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. So it's now your turn. It's your turn to now glorify me with the glory that I will have alongside of you, side by side, which is that very glory I already had with you before the world. Restore me to that glory, that position and level of intimacy. Okay, with me so far? You guys understand the prayer? But we get so caught up, so caught up in the polemical apologetic aspect we forget that this prayer reveals the infinite love, beauty of the heart of our God. Okay, so now with that said, he now prays for the disciples. Watch here. Look at this heart. I have manifested your name to the men who, whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now, manifested your name. What it means is, as I said, Previous session, 
In Hebrew and Greek, Hebrew Shem, Greek Onoma, Onoma means more than what's your name? Oh, my name is Tom. If you look at how the word name is used, it refers to the character, the nature, the essence, right? And the authority of someone. So what he's saying is, I have revealed your character to them. I have revealed your nature to them. I have made known what you're like. I have manifested your character, your qualities, your heart. That's what it means. Because they already knew God's name. They knew God's name was Yahweh. In fact, let me show you how it translated in other versions. And he says it again in 26. So keep that in mind. Watch here. So what does it mean to make your name known? See? Amplified Bible. I have manifested your name. Revealed your very self. Your real self. Right? See what it means? Let's go through it. See? I have shown them what you are like. Are you understanding the point now? Let's, let's go through it. I have shown them what you are like. See that? Easy. I have shown them who you are. That's what it means to make God's name known, to make his character known, what he's like, who he is, right? Let's go here. I showed what you are like, revealed your name, God's reputation, character. See it? And I'll look at 26 as well. I have made you known. I have shown them what you are like. Let's see how Phillips translates it. Right? I have shown yourself to the men whom you gave me from the world. Are you getting it now? You're learning? Everyone at Mraga, make Romo great, everyone else getting it? It's not just saying, well, I told them your name is Yahweh. No, no, it's more than that. They already knew the name is Yahweh. <clears throat> okay. I have told these men all about you. Right? Let's see here. Let's see. I spelled out your character in detail to the men and women you gave me. See? Let's go here. NIV also translates it similarly. I showed what you are like. I have revealed your name. I have shown you to the disciples. NIV, I have revealed you to... You see the, what it means? Be patient, guys. No rush. I just want you to catch the meaning. Okay. The cat and everyone. All right. I have told them about your nature and declared your name to them. See? I have shown these men who you really are. Right? There you go. But now let's look at verse 26, as he says in 26. Everyone getting it? You're learning? What name means? It can mean your authority. It can mean your character, your nature, your essence. So let's see again. Let's start at the bottom. Go up. Okay, I have told them who you are. I have told them about your nature, John 17, 26. See that? Lord, strengthen my throat. There you go, you see it? Let's go up. I have revealed you to them. See NLT? Okay. I have made you known to them, NIV. And our and IRV, I have shown you to them. So keep that in mind. I've shown them what you are like, NCV. Right? I have made known that known to them your name, right? Well, we get that one. Let's see here. Message. Let's see. Oh, wait. I have made your very being known to them. Who you are and what you do. See? I've revealed you to them. See? You're catching it, right? What it means? Okay. 
All right. I have made yourself known to them. See, it's all sinking in, right? I have showed them what you are like. I made you known to them. I have showed, made known to them what you are like, your name. See? I have shown them what you are like. Easy. I have shown them what you are like, ERV. I told them what you are like. So it's sinking in, right? See how much meat and scripture you got in pack? Can't just read surface, guys. Amplify. Okay. I have made your name known to them, revealed your character and your very self. There are two versions of it. The classical amplifying and updated one. I have made your name known to them. We'll continue to make it known. So there you go. Now we got it, right? So everyone understand what it means now? Sinking in? What it means? I don't know what the cat wants. Let me see if the cat wants something. Wants food or something? So what is our Lord saying? How do you obtain eternal life? How do you obtain eternal life? Knowing who God is. Knowing his character. Knowing his nature. Knowing his qualities. Knowing him intimately. And that makes sense. Why does it make sense? You cannot love someone you don't know. Okay? It makes sense. You cannot love someone you don't know. You can't love a stranger. But the more you get to know a person's character, the more you see what he's like or she's like, that will either make you love them more or despise them. You understand the point? So what is our Lord saying? To know God is to be in love with him. To know God is to see how infinitely beautiful and loving and glorious he is. To know God is to see how irresistible he is. See. You don't love a stranger, cannot love a stranger. But once you know the person, you either, by getting to know them, will despise them because you'll see they're evil, or you're going to love them, right? So what our Lord is saying is, the more you get to know God as he is, not a God that you've imagined to exist, a God after your own likeness, because a lot of people think they worship the God of the Bible. But they have views of God that are not biblical, that are not in accord with his nature. So what is the work of the Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit come to do? Correct your wrong views of God, perfect your view of God, and enable you to see God as he is and love him for who he is, not for what you've made him out to be. Right? A lot of people love the God of the Bible that is not the God of the Bible. They think it is. So they made God in such a way, they've depicted God in such a way, they think they're worshiping God of the Bible. That's why Jesus said to the Jews, you don't know God. You don't know him. You think you know him. You think you're worshiping the God of the Bible. You're not. He said that to them. John 8, 54, 55. He goes, now I know him. And if I said I didn't know him, I'd be a liar like you. So what's the work of the Holy Spirit? Change my understanding, my perception of who God is and what he's like. Correct any mistake. So I love God as he is and accept him as he is and see him for what he's really like. Right? You understand? So you see how much meat there is in part? And I won't be able to unpack it all. And I made your name known to them and I will make it known. So that the love with which you love me may be in them. See, see the connection? The more I reveal your character to them, the more they will fall in love with you. The more they will be filled with your love. Right? And the more they will know how much you love them. Right? So what is our Lord saying here? The more I make you known to them, the more they're going to fall in love with you, the more they're going to be filled with love for you, and the more they're going to see how much you love them. See?
I'm about to, anyway. I'll give him a second. You get my point? The people who are cold towards God are those who do not know God, who have not spent time with God, who have not meditated on God, who have not meditated on these words and actions of God found in Scripture. They know of Him and go through the rituals, but they don't truly come to know Him. Know Him. And that's many people. You go to church. What's your whore mother happened about today, David? Isn't that the same potato head that they stuffed in her arse, your whore mother? That you came out of her arse, a bastard, you scum, you filthy lowlife prostitute? You're a man behind the screen, right, David? Go find your mother because the share are looking for her, you filthy whore. Anyway, glory to the Father, the Spirit. See? So you understand the point. There are people who know of God but don't know him. And they go through the rituals and the motions. God says it's more than that. Because when you get to know him as he is, and you see how infinitely loving, beautiful, glorious, humble, compassionate he is, the more you'll fall in love with him, and the more you'll be <clears throat> moved to want to then delight in him and delight him. The more you see how beautiful he is, the more you fall in love with him, the more you want to do to make him happy. You understand? Instead of just going through the motions. You get it? It won't be going through the motions. You'll be doing it with joy and ecstasy and love because you'll be excited to make him happy, seeing how beautiful he is and how glorious he is and how much he loves you. Right? That's the point of this prayer. So I'm trying to not belabor it, but I'm just trying to show you what he's saying. I have made known your character to these men. They've seen what you're like by looking at me. Why? Because he who sees Jesus sees the Father. If Jesus is the perfect image of the Father and he mirrors the Father perfectly and he does only what the Father tells him to do and only what the Father does, that means that when you see Jesus, you are seeing what the Father would do and be like if he became flesh. You understand? Jesus so perfectly imitates the Father that the Father would do nothing different than the Son if he became flesh, but with only one difference. He wouldn't call himself the Son. You understand my point? This is how perfectly Jesus mirrors and images the Father. The Father would have done nothing differently than the Son if he became flesh. Only thing is, he wouldn't call himself the Son because he's not the Son. That's how perfectly, inseparably united they are. You hear me? So when you see Jesus, you're seeing the heart of the Father. The love of the Father, the purity of the Father, because he perfectly mirrors the very character of the Father. That's the message of the Bible. You understand how the message of the Bible is? That's why he says to Philip, when you see me, you see the Father. The Father is in me. He's working through me. And I only do what the Father does and say what the Father wants me to say. So look no further. So that's his point. You understand? The point here, what our Lord is trying to communicate. Let me repeat again the message. Let me repeat again. Okay, you ready? Let me repeat the message again. The Father would not have done anything differently, would not have acted any differently, but would do the very exact things Jesus did in the same way Jesus does them, with one exception. He wouldn't call himself the Son. That's how perfectly they mirror one another. And when you get to see Jesus, and you see the perfect reflection, the perfect expression of the Father, how can you not fall in love with the Father? Do you understand? 
And that's Colossians 1.15, the image of the invisible God. Hebrews 1.3, the exact representation of God's being. Okay, everyone got it? So did that point sink in? You see what we're missing when we read the Bible apologetically, polemically, not devotionally? To hear from God and see his heart and his love for us? Yep, you got it. Perfectly said. So this is why I want to teach you. It's not about apologetics polemics. We have to do that to muzzle the dogs. The Bible is given for you to know God and see how real he is and how much he loves you so you can fall in love with him because he's irresistible. That's how you're supposed to read it. And that's what I want to do in my sessions. That's why over 90% of the material focused on Christian doctrine. Even when I'm rebutting, I'm still affirming. Glory to the Holy Spirit for that gift. He gets the glory for it. So it's sinking in. All right. So if it's sinking in, this is who our God is. I have made your character known to them, Father. So even when I say that, I feel like they want to cry. To who? Those who gave me out of the world. Because they were already yours seeking you. And because they're seeking you, then you brought them to me. And they've kept your word. Now they have come to know that everything you have given me is from you. They have no doubt I'm from you, I'm one with you, and inseparable. <clears throat> For the words <clears throat> which you gave me, I have given to them. And they receive them. And truly understand that I came forth from you. That's what they said in John 16, right? Now we know that you know all things. We don't need to question you because you're not speaking parables. This makes us believe you come from God. Right? They said in John 16, 29 to 31. Right? 29 30. Now look, look at his prayer. Here's the heart of your God, the heart of my God, the heart of our God. Okay, focus, I cried out loud. Okay, watch here. Look what he says here. Look at his heart. I ask on their behalf. See, I'm praying for them. I do not ask on behalf of the world. But of those whom you have given me, for they are yours. I'm praying for them, Father. Look what he prays for the disciples. Now, first, he's praying for the apostles, the disciples. And all things that are mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I've been glorified in them. Abba, I have glorified myself through them because they went out doing miracles in my name, raising the dead in my name. Casting out demons in my name, curing people in my name, saving, seeing who I am. So I glorified myself through them. They've seen it. They see who I am. Right? Now watch it. Watch what he's going to say. I am no longer in the world. Did you catch it? But he's still in the world. Remember what I said about the prayer? The Lord will speak as if he's already in heaven. Why? Because from his perspective, it's a done deal. No one's going to stop him. Next stop is heaven after his crucifixion, burial, resurrection. So he can speak of the future as already taking place now. I'm already in the heaven. I've already left the world. You see the assurance and the power and the sovereignty of our God? But he is in the world. Right? You see it? But he says, I'm not in the world. You see, this is an affirmation of God's perfect sovereignty, power, and authority. No one will stop him. So he can speak of the future as already taking place. You get it? It's right there. I am no longer in the world. Okay. And yet they themselves are in the world. Sorry. Sorry about that, guys. One second. They themselves are in the world. See it? Watch here. And I come to you. Now look how he speaks to his father. Holy father. Holy father. Keep them in your name. Preserve them by your authority. That authority that you've given me. Because the father's authority is the son's authority and the spirit's authority. Because remember I said name can also mean authority. That they may be one as even as we are. So what am I praying? 
Abba, I want them to be perfectly, inseparably united to one another, perfectly loving one another as we perfectly love one another. Perfect love and union. This is his heart for the apostles. Okay? But let's continue. This is the heart of God. While I was with them, I was keeping them in your name. I was keeping them by your authority, because the Father's authority is the Son's authority, which you have given me. And I guarded them, and not one of them perished, but the Son of Perdition, because he chose to walk away and reject Christ. So that scripture would be fulfilled. And sadly, he fulfilled scripture. Watch here now. Watch how deep it gets. Now notice he says, while I was with them, but he's still with them. Why is he talking like he's already left them? But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, so that they may have my joy made full in themselves. I'm showing them your heart and my heart. And when I appear to them after the resurrection and assure them I'm alive, and they see me physically return, they will no longer be afraid, no longer be discouraged, because they will know who I am and who I, who who you are, and know our love for them, and know because I live, they will live, and nothing will cause them to shrink back. They will be ecstatic, full with joy, knowing our Lord is alive. He's not dead. He's conquered death. We've seen him physically, spent 40 days with us, giving us irrefutable proof he's alive. And we saw him physically in heaven, so he's there. He's alive. And if he's alive, we're alive. We can't die. You see? See his prayer? You see what he's praying? But now, he's now going to pray for all of us. He's now going to pray for every believer. That means Jesus, who's God, knows and envisions all who believe in him. That means now he's going to be praying for Vascon, for Texas Chick, for myself. He's going to include us in the prayer. Watch. Watch the next group he prays for. Wait. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Set them apart by the truth. In other words, it's the truth of God that will set you free from the lies, deception of Satan, and the lies and the false promises of earthly pleasures. That's how you'll be set apart. Knowing the truth, the reality of God. And what is the truth? What makes reality clear to show you what is real and what is fake? God's word. Is that what he's saying? You see what I'm saying? He's saying here. Amen. Have that power. As you sent me into the world, I also sent them into the world. For their sake, I set myself apart, that they themselves also may be sanctified in truth. What does he mean? He's setting himself apart for the work of consecrating them, preserving them, and energizing them to know what the truth is, stand in it, and proclaim it. Okay? But now he's going to pray for Athir, Giovanni, Texas Chick, Man on fire, Maria, right? Vascon. He's now going to be praying for HVAC Power, Stacy B. Long, Leroy Glunt 77, Nain. I'm not what I'm not. He's now going to be praying for you guys. Watch. Praying for me. Watch. I do not ask on behalf of these alone. Now note, but for those who also will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one. He's now praying for every single believer who will come to be saved and know Jesus through their gospel proclamation. And by the way, they're still preaching to you to this day. Did you know that? The disciples are still converting people. Why? Whose gospels do we read? Whose letters do we read? Theirs. So 2,000 years later, the apostles and their companions are still converting people, saving people, and preaching. Because when you read their letters, 
and the Gospels, you're reading their preaching. You understand that? So that's what our Lord is saying. I'm praying for all those who believe through their word. Well, you and I believe through their word. They left us the revelation. They preached it orally, wrote it down, and entrusted it to the church. So anytime I read, they're preaching to you. Now, right here, what am I reading? I'm reading John 17. Who wrote this? John. So now who's proclaiming the gospel? John. He's preaching. Not me. I'm just reading what John wrote. So John is still preaching and saving 2,000 years later. John is still preaching to us today because this is his letter, inspired by the Spirit, preserved. He wrote this prayer that he saw. So we have come to faith through them to this day until the Lord returns. Right? Come on, kid. Get out of here. Waiting for the cat to move. You see what you see the point? Okay, but let's continue. I'm waiting for the cat to go out. Okay. So what does he want? I'm not just praying for them. I'm praying for all who believe through their message. And what do I want for them? I want them to be one, perfectly, inseparably united in love and fellowship. Love one another perfectly. Have perfect communion and care for one another. As Father, you are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us. The Lord wants us to love one another and care for another and be inseparable just as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are. Father, Son, and Spirit are in love with one another, have perfect communion with one another, never fight or disagree or argue with one another, and their fellowship is unbreakable. It's immutable, and that's what he wants for us. I want your love, your fellowship, your gathering to perfectly image the communion, the fellowship, the love, the intimacy I, Father and Spirit, experience with one another. I want you to reflect it. I want you to manifest it. I want you to share in it. That's what he's saying. So every time we fail to achieve that fellowship, we are dishonoring the Lord, breaking his heart, and we are hindering his prayer from being realized. See? So this prayer is for Giovanni, Vasca, Atir, Nina, Kirileisun, Fariex Muslim, Al Chaldean, all of you. He's praying for you. I'm not what I'm not. Smiley, Leroy Gunt states he's praying for all of us. He's now praying for all of us. And this is what he wants for all of us. Okay? So that the world may believe that you sent me. The glory which you have given me. Now look at his love. I have given to them. That they may be one just as we are one. The glory that Jesus had on earth was the ministry of love, compassion, mercy. Ministry where he did miracles to show his love and compassion. And what he wants for mankind. He wants mankind to be healed, restored, and made whole. He wants to heal you, perfect you spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and physically. No more pain, no more disease, no more oppression, no more misery, no more demonization. And that's what the miracles set out to do, to heal and restore you and to convince you, I am your Savior who loves you. So now I'm going to give them that glory that they will go out into the world, right? And manifest the character of God. Manifest the love of God. The unity of God through their fellowship. Now watch here. That they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me. That they may be perfected, perfected in unity. So that the world may know that you sent me. Now here's the key. I want you to catch this. Through our perfect union. In other words, what our Lord is saying is, the glory he's given us to do on earth is the glory he manifested on earth where the world will see 
Jesus in us through our love, through our union, through our boldness, our fearlessness. Jesus said, by this they shall know you're my disciples, your love for one another. When we achieve that perfect communion and we achieve that perfect love, the world will know it's a miracle. This is not humanly possible. This is not something humans can do in their own strength. It has to be the work of God and the world will be saved. In other words, the world's salvation now hinges on our realizing this prayer. Did you catch what our Lord's saying? So now he's praying for the world. He's now praying for the world. Did you see how it went? I would have cussed out your wife, but the Shia already have fun with her. I'm, I was told you share with the Shia. All right. Anyway, you see, he goes from praying for the, all of us who believe, but then that through our perfect union and love being manifested on earth, which is the glory he gave to, for us on earth, the world will then come to know, right? And believe you sent me. So now Jesus is saying, this will result in the world believing and knowing God sent Jesus. That means salvation. You know what I'm saying? Salvation. But here's one key, though. I want you to catch this. 23, 24. If this doesn't move you in your spirit, I don't know what will. Watch here. Look what he says. I in them and you in me, that they may be perfect in unity. And the world will then know not only that you sent me, but you love them even as you love me. Do you understand what he just said? Jesus just said, the Father loves all believers united to Christ just as much as he loves Jesus. Jesus just told you, my Father loves and adores you just as much as he loves and adores me. Did it sink in? I want the world to know, Father, that you love my body, the church, as much as you love me. You're in love with them to the same extent that you're in love with me. So the world then will then want to join my body so that they too will receive your love and they too will be loved by you as much as you love me. This is the prayer, right? See it? It's right there. That's why. I'm... Here, let me enlarge it. So you see it with your own eyes. If you think about it, it's going to make you cry. Who am I? What am I? A maggot? Worm? Garbage? That I sin against the Lord may not give me what I deserve. That the Father loves me as much as he loves Jesus because of what Jesus did for me and what Jesus wants for me. As long as I'm in Christ. Focus, guys. But then now watch the other part. Watch the other part. Focus. You thought this was powerful. Look at this here. Father, look at it, what he wants. Where does he want us all to be? Where does he want us all to be? Listen to this. Watch here. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am. Now notice present tense. Remember, he's on earth. They're already with him on earth. You catch the present tense. But he's not talking about being with him on earth. He's talking about being with him in glory when he returns to heaven. But he doesn't say, be with me where I will be. No, where I am right now. Because this is the assurance, the guarantee, because he's almighty. No one's going to stop him from being glorified. See the present tense? See the present tense? Even though he's still on earth, yet to have entered his glory. But now look at his prayer. Look at this. I want them to be with me where I am so that they may see my glory, which you've given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. Do you see his love? He didn't say, I want them to be 
beneath me. Next level down. I want them there alongside of me. Side by side with me. With me. Where I'm at, I want them there with me. And when they are with me, they will then see my true nature, my true worth and value. Then it will dawn on them. They had God and the flesh in their midst. That they were kissing God, hugging God, holding God in a physical body, eating with God. That I was the God of Abraham who was in their midst. Right? He wants us with him. He wants his friends. He wants his body with him, next to him, not somewhere else. And then I want them to see how much you love me. Because when they see my glory, they will realize you are in love with me. You adore me. You obsess over me because I'm your heart. And that you've been in love with me even before the world was. When they see the glory that you have given me. See it? Then we're going to realize, wow, this Jesus is so special. The Father Almighty is absolutely in love with him. Absolutely adores him. Obsesses over him. Which is why he made all things for his son. To show how much he loves the son. They will then know, Father. How much you love me and adore me when they see the glory that is mine alongside of you. And this will show them and convince them. You have been in love with me and have been loving me even before the world was created. You understand? You understand? If you think about these words, they'll make you cry. See? So we get into polemics apologetics, but we forget why he prayed this and why it's recorded. Now look at his heart. Uh, this one's going to kill me, this part too. Oh, righteous Father, although the world has not known you, yet I have known you. And these, these have known that you sent me. And I've made your name known to them. I have revealed your true character, what it's like, by perfectly mirroring you. And I will continue to do it. Now watch. Why? So that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. So they will be filled with your love. The love you love me, you love them. You love them and adore them as much as you love me. And that love will be filling them and encouraging them. And I'll be with them and in them and living with them. And I'll never leave them. See it? That's exactly right, Giovanni. This is how to read the Bible. It's not for polemics. It's not for apologetics. We have to do that because we're left no choice because of heretics. Right? This is it. So I want to take a moment to unpack this prayer. You see? This is it. This is what it means to have eternal life. When you know him and get to truly experience him and see his true nature, his true character, the real God as he really is, He's irresistible. You cannot help but fall in love with him. You can't help it. Right? You see how much he loves us? Whew. It's moving me in my heart.
See how much he loves us? Let me read some more words for you to show you how much he loves us. Watch here. Show you how much he loves us. Let me read all the way to, yeah, let me read to 19. And then we can talk about Mark 12. This is just to let you know why we do this. And we'll read Mark 12, Lord willing, and I'll do John 17 some other time. Exactly. That's the whole purpose. That's the whole purpose. See how much he loves us? Woo, Lord. Therefore, when he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified. His glorification is coming up, right? And God has glorified him. And God will be magnified in and through me and what I'm going to do as I reveal to the world his love. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself. God will then bring me into his presence to dwell alongside of him in the same glory so people know my worth, my dignity, and who I am and will glorify him immediately. Now look what he says to us. Look, look at the words of the Lord. Watch here. Look at the word of the Lord. Little children, I'm with you a little while longer because he's about to be taken away and killed. Then he'll reappear. You'll seek me. And I says, as I said to the Jews, now I also say to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. You cannot come to the cross with me. You cannot descend in Hades with me. You understand what he's saying to them? He's preparing them now because he's about to be killed. You can't come to the cross with me. You can't descend into Abraham's bosom as I bring them out, bring them to Father. But you will see me again, and then you won't see me anymore because I go to heaven. But now in the meantime, look what he says. When the Bible's unpacked, it's beautiful, right? It's miraculous. When you understand the Bible by the grace of the Holy Spirit, you know it's a miracle. It's supernatural. Watch here. Look what he says. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, another even as I've loved you. Meaning, you must love your brothers, sisters, the same exact way that I love all of you. You understand what he's saying? Why do you think I said, now that God has convinced me of the ancient traditions, and I know these traditions, the Orthodox, right whether oriental or whether eastern right the catholic the Assyrian church they're all ancient they're all apostolic don't schism i will do everything i can to love all of you and serve all of you and never alienate you because i want to honor my lord i want to honor him in this prayer tell me about it kitty with my lust and my filth May Jesus save me, not damn me. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Love one another. Peter, love Andrew the way I love you. John, love Peter the way I love you. Love him as much as I love you. Well, that's impossible, Lord. It doesn't matter. That means you don't try, stop trying to love more and more because you can never love enough. That's the point. You can never love enough. Okay? Even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. Now, the other one. The other one. Watch this one. Watch here. This one here. No better words, more powerful words, more beautiful words have ever been written. Because these are the words of the God-man, <clears throat> God in flesh. Now watch here, this one. Watch here. This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this. There is no greater expression of your love for your brothers and sisters. The greatest proof that you love your brothers and sisters the way I love you but by your willingness to die for them. The one laid down his life for his friends. You understand what it means? The greatest proof, the greatest example you could give that you truly love 
one another the way Jesus loves you is your willingness to die for your brother or sister to save them if it comes down to it. Right? Yep, this is at the same night he instituted the Holy Eucharist. Now look how much he loves us. Watch here, guys. Watch here. Getting all that? Look. Look how much he loves us. This is unlike Allah, the Satan of Muhammad. Look how much he loves us. Right? Watch here. You are my friends if you do what I command. You notice? If you obey me, then you show you truly love me and are my friends. And not lip service, just using me. But now watch here. No longer do I call you slaves. I don't want slaves. I want friends. I want a family. I want brothers and sisters and mothers. I'm not here to enslave you. I'm not here to oppress you. I'm not here to <clears throat> tyrannize you. I'm not here to take advantage of my power and make you my pawns. That's not my heart. That's not me. That's Allah of the Quran, the Satan of Muhammad. <clears throat> I want friends. I want you to be my friend. I want to be your friend. I want to be your brother. And I want you to be my brother, my sister, my mother. That's what I want. That means Jesus is looking at every one of you and he's saying this. Nina, you are my friend and my sister. Kirilesun, you are my friend and my sister. Vaskan, you are my friend and my brother. Od Kaldian, Khoriwit, my friend, Khuni. I, your God, call you my brother and my friend. So boast that you have God as your brother. Jay Apologetics, Stacey Long, you are my friend. You see? See the heart of God? Save me, Lord. Save us. Forgive me, Lord. No longer do I call you slaves. For the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I've heard from my father I've made known to you. You did not choose me. Now it's not talking about Calvinism. It's not about the apostles. They didn't choose to be an apostle. He chose them. Meaning of all the disciples, I chose Peter to be an apostle. I That's what it means. It's not about the apostles who gave them that position. But I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would abide so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This command, this I command you, that you love one. He keeps hammering it. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, because of this, the world hates you. That's the heart of God. This is the heart of God. Right? We got it? We got it? Sinking in? By the grace of our God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Now, because this was such a beautiful message, brethren, such a beautiful message, I really think I'm going to end it here. Why? Because I don't want to go into Mark 12 and lose the, the theme and the mood. Because I want us to walk away, our hearts tender, filled with love and joy and peace of the Lord. So I just want to end it here. Just to reflect on John 17. And a reminder. I want it to be a reminder. The reminder, the Bible is not read polemically. Or apologetically. That's not the purpose of the Bible. The Bible is to be read devotionally to learn about who this God is. 
his character, his will for you, so that you can know him as he is. Because when you get to know him as he is, you cannot help but fall in love with him. Because he's irresistible. So we'll end it here, brethren. Pray, the Lord give me the power to practice what I preach. Not be a hypocrite to help me with my vices, my lust, food. Give me grace and discipline to finish the race and love him. And I pray that for all of us. Pray for my daughters. Lord, bring them to me. And I raise them and God provide for me and pray for favor with the accountant tomorrow. Pray God bless this young woman. Her, his will be done for us and I can be the Lord Jesus to her and finish the race. And Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Father, have mercy. Son of God, have mercy. Holy Spirit, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, please do forgive us. Fill us with the Spirit. And Lord, help me and heal me. I don't want to hurt you. I want to love you, Lord. We give you our hearts, our bodies, our everything. Lord, please own us and purge our motives to honor you. Thank you, Son of God. Thank you, Lord, that you entered the world. You became flesh from the Holy Virgin. Your mother whom we love and adore because you created her to give you your flesh. That flesh that you crucified for our salvation. Allowing men to nail you in that flesh. And that flesh being the means by which you redeemed us. Fill us, Lord. And be with my daughters. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Modern Athic. Take care.